We have seen a lot of radio controllers on this channel till now. We have seen one using the Unref24 radio module and making the entire board. Two weeks back we have seen the controller made with the HC12 radio module and the gyro control, but today I have one of the simplest radio controller. This board uses the 433 MHz radio connection and an 80 tiny 85 chip, so everything is very simple. It has only 4 digital channels, so we can't really use it with drones for example, but we could connect anything to these 4 digital outputs. The design is simple and very cheap, just a few dollars. With this tutorial you will learn the following steps. You will learn how to make the 80 tiny 85 shield compatible with the Arduino Uno. How to burn the 8 MHz bootloader to an 80 tiny 85 chip. Learn how to program the 80 tiny and finally how to use the 433 MHz circuit and send the data and by that create a simple radio controller. Before we start, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell in order to see my future videos. And also thanks to all my patrons. So guys, let's get started. This project is sponsored by GLC PCB. They are a professional PCB manufacturer from China with more than 10 years of experience. I can easily say that their services are the perfect solution for cheap and fast prototyping and for quantities from 5 up to 15,000 boards. For small boards you should write the panel by GLC PCB service and put more boards on the same 10 by 10 cm PCB and by that have even more boards for only $2. What's up my friends, welcome back. Let's start with the 80 tiny 85 chip. This is an 8-bit RISC microcontroller and sometimes is also called a small Arduino. It has 5 I.O. pins. All 5 can be digital, 3 of them can be analog inputs and 2 could create PWM signals. To program the chip we need an SPA communication. The final code for this project will use the micro function as well and after searching online I found that the 80 tiny could use those functions only with the 8 MHz bootloader. So this is what we will do. We will create a shield following this schematic that can be connected to an Arduino Uno. Links for all the schematics used in this video are below. For this you will need a drill PCB, an 8 pin socket, some male PCB pins, a 10 microfarad capacitor and some jump wires. These components are extra, but I will also add some female pins and an LED with resistor to each 80 tiny digital pin for tests. Check the second schematic for the 80 tiny shield if you also want the LEDs. I first cut the male pins that could fit only on the upper pins of the Arduino Uno. These pins here. We don't need the rest. I push the pins flat with the plastic part like this. Then I solder them on the drill PCB like this, with the plastic part on the non copper side of the PCB. Now I solder the socket in the middle, the female pins and the LEDs with the resistor and I make all the connections. So the shield for the 80 tiny is ready. Plug it into the Arduino Uno and put the 80 tiny 85 into the socket. Make sure which one is pin 1 and don't put the chip reversed. Now connect the Arduino Uno to your PC. Pay attention, right now I'm using the latest version of the Arduino IDE, which is the 1.8.7. But for some reason the 80 tiny 85 boards won't work with this version. For that go below in the description and download the zip file with the Arduino IDE version 1.0.5. Extract that in any folder that you want, it doesn't require installation. I've extracted in program files. Now go below in the video once again and download the 80 tiny master zip file. Extract that zip file and copy the tiny folder. Now go to the Arduino 1.0.5 folder and go to hardware and paste that tiny folder there. Now go back and run the Arduino from this folder. With this method we won't affect the other version of the Arduino that we already have installed. Now if you go to tools, boards, you will see a lot of 80 tiny boards. So we are ready to burn the bootloader. Ok guys, so when I bought this chip, it had the 1 MHz internal oscillator bootloader, 
but we need the 8 MHz one. For that, go to File, Examples, Arduino ISP and open that example. Now go to Boards and select the Arduino Uno. Select the CAM and upload this code to your Arduino. Now we could use the ISP programmer. Now go back to Tools, Boards and select the ATtiny85 8 MHz internal oscillator board. Go once again to Tools, Programmer and select Arduino as ISP. Select Tools and burn Bootloader. You will see the LEDs flashing a lot and now the ATtiny85 has a 8 MHz bootloader installed, so it's time to program the chip. For that go to Examples, Basic and open the Blink example. Change the pin to let's say digital pin 0 of the ATtiny85. Make sure you have the ATtiny85 board selected and click Upload. So there you go, now the LED is blinking with the ATtiny. We don't need the Arduino anymore. Ok guys, so now you know how to burn the bootloader and how to program the ATtiny85 chip. Very easy right? You have a step by step tutorial on my webpage electronoops.com. So let's go to the next step. I want a radio connection between two ATtiny's. To keep it simple and cheap I will use two of these 433 MHz modules. I've also reverse engineered these modules and I've made the schematics for both the transmitter and receiver and also made my own boards that already include the ATtiny, buttons and the radio circuit. But for now let's make this project with the commercial modules that only cost around 50 cents. This is the schematic for the transmitter. We have 4 push buttons with pull downs connected to digital pin 0, 1, 2 and 4 of the ATtiny. Digital pin D3 is the data out that goes to the radio transmitter. I've also placed an AMS1117 5V voltage regulator so I could supply the board using a 9V battery. I've also put an LED in order to see when the transmitter is powered on and also a sliding switch. I've made the connections on a drill PCB with a socket for the ATtiny chip. And I've also soldered a wire to the transmitter module as an antenna in order to increase range. Remember, these modules are not for long range. A maximum of 100 meters using antennas. This is the schematic for the receiver. And this is the board that I've made. It has the ATtiny, the radio receiver, the 5 volts regulator and pins for the input power and outputs for the 4 channels. The outputs could be connected to anything. In this case I'll later connect some LEDs to show you the results. Digital pin D3 is the data in from the radio receiver and the receiver board is ready. Ok guys so listen to me, these modules work very fine using the virtual wire library. With the Arduino that work very fine. You have a tutorial about that on my webpage. I've even made a chat between two Arduinos using these modules. But for some reason, using the ATtiny's I couldn't manage to get to work the virtual wire communication, so I decided to keep it simple. And this is what I did. I create a square wave on the transmitter pin. Depending on which button is pressed, I will change the frequency of that square signal. On the receiver I measure the frequency and depending on the value I activate one or other output. Here I have the receiver signal connected to my oscilloscope. And as you can see, for each button I have a different frequency and all I have to do now is to detect the range. It's time to see the code. This is the transmitter code. I first define the button pins as inputs and the TX pin as an output. Then I create a function that will create the square wave on digital pin 3 of the ATtiny. By changing the delay here I will change the frequency of the signal. In the void loop, depending on which button is pressed, I will create a signal with different delays. And that's it. As I said before, it's the simplest radio controller ever. Upload this code to the ATtiny using the Arduino as ISP as before and then put the chip onto the transmitter board. Now this is the receiver code. When I detect that the RX pin is high, I start a counter. When it gets low I stop that counter and by making the difference I can get the delay of the pulse. And that's it. Now depending on the received delay I activate one or other output. The code is made in order to be able to push multiple buttons at the same time. 
For example, in case of a toy car, you would be able to go forward and turning to the left at the same time. And that's it! Upload the code and we are ready! And as you can see, now for each button I press, a different LED is turned on. The downside of this controller is that it only has digital channels. If you want analog signals, you should change the transmitted signal and also use some kind of encoding system. I wanted to use a wired communication between the 80 tinies. that would be great. But here is the problem. As you remember from the infrared remote tutorial, wired communication is always high and it will get low when sending data. But these 433 MHz radio modules must oscillate all the time. And when the transmitter is not sending anything, we get noise. Look what happens when I turn off the controller. That noise would definitely trigger the wired communication and we will get false values. I've tried to pull down the receive signal but didn't work. That's why we should use the virtual wire, but that didn't work for me with the 80 tinies. I will try to improve the communication of this project so stay tuned for future posts on my webpage. Below you will also find the Gerber files for these two boards that already have the radio modules included. I'm still working on these boards. I've made them using the same technique as in my past tutorial, using a DLP printer to expose the photosensitive film and then etch the board. I had really good results for all the SMD components. You will also find the schematic of this radio transmitter and receiver modules that I've made with the valves obtained from the reverse engineering, just in case you want to build your own and maybe increase the power. I hope that you learned something new. If so, don't forget to subscribe and activate the notification bell for future videos. Also click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. And remember, if you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys.